So this is a video about how to fit a double N type roller bearing to a, in this case a Schoblin 102. So in my previous video I showed you how to remove the remove the old bearing. So I'm now going to fit the new bearing. So I've got my new bearing here and um, I'm just going to open that up and uh, fit the outer race. So I'm not going to go into detail about the assembly of the actual bearing. I'm going to show you how to adjust it. Um, it's all, you can find all the information about how to fit the bearing on my website. There's uh, the literature is all available there. And I'm assuming that uh, you'll go away and read the literature about this. So what I'm doing now is I'm just taking the bearing out of its protective packaging. Obviously being extremely careful with it. I don't want it to get dirty. My hands are nice and clean. Um, so I'm looking at the bearing and determining which end is the tapered end. So this is the smaller end. That's the larger end. I've got the spindle sitting here. I'm just going to drop it on so that the inner is now assembled onto the onto the spindle and I'm going to remove the outer and fit it into the lathe. Okay so I've just tapped the bearing home and or not home but just into the into the casing here and now I'm going to use the uh, the labyrinth seal cover just to push it the rest of the way home um, using the screws to pull it into place. Now I've cleaned all these in the ultrasonic cleaner so they should be all nice, nice and clean but there is always a danger when you're doing a job like this of contaminating the the bearing and you really do have to be quite careful just to make sure that everything you're doing is being done with the utmost attention to cleanliness. You know metalworking workshops are not very clean places. I have cleaned down my bench, I've cleaned everything around and hopefully everything's going to go in so we're going to just push that all the way home. Now they're all the way back and the oil ring they should have assembled in first that's in behind the bearing and and that is now not able to rotate because it's being pushed back all the way by the bearing so remove that labyrinth seal cover now we can uh, turn our attention to the actual bearing itself. Okay, so using our C-spanner we can just uh, tighten the bearing. Now you're not going to get very far with this because you're only going to be able to move it a certain distance before the whole thing goes tight. And if you read the instructions, the instructions will tell you that uh, you need to tap the back of the nut to get the thing to move, to get the bearing inner to move up that taper and to stretch to adjust it for the, to get your clearances. So <coughs> we're, uh, we're going, to, going to do that but we're not going to do it by hammering on the back end of this. For a start you start hammering on the back end, end of that unless you've got something that's completely clean and that there's no way anything is going to fall off it, no tiny little chips from, the, uh, from, the, from, from, from whatever you're using to, to tap in the back of this a piece of tube or something, you know your hammer or whatever on the top, you're likely to drop a load of muck into that bearing and you really don't want to do that because that will be a nightmare to get it clean afterwards. So what we're going to do is we're going to remove it from my 
little assembly here and I'm holding it. And we're going to drop it into this assembly here. Now, you know, this is a this is something I've made up to do this job. You can quite happily do this with a with just a piece of tube standing on the floor. There. So that has now driven this nut up the taper. It's just slightly moved it so that it's moved this assembly. This has gone loose now, you see. It's moved that bearing slightly up that taper. And so what I'm going to do now is assemble this into the machine and see where it sits and to see see what the what the clearance is and the clearances are all given in the in the manual they tell you how to uh, what the uh, what the, the clearances should be I'm not looking to uh, to get to the absolute factory clearance it's it's it, you're, you, you, it, it's 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 something which in my opinion you're, you're chasing after um, tiny fractions of a millimeter and um, you know it's it's uh, it's up to everybody else to make their own judgments on these things but but um, my opinion and my experience over the last 30 years has shown me that that actually for the for the purposes to which these machines are, are, are used if you can get them to within a couple of tenths of a foul so 0 0.1 of a millimeter is 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 four tenths of a foul if you can get it to, to 0 0.005 then that's going to be extremely good. Um, you don't want to, 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 to move the bearing too far up the taper because then you're going to have to start hammering on this side of the bearing to make it move down. You really don't want to do that. Better to have a little more clearance in the bearing. You're only talking about you know, tiny frag, fractions of a millimetre. You're better off having a tiny amount of, 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 of extra play in the bearing rather than trying to chase the factory specification. So I'm now going to assemble this back into the headstock and we'll have a look at that uh, in, in the headstock. So now we've got the spindle in and we're just going to do the nut up on the back. Now I've put a spacer in there so I can just do the nut up so it's finger tight so it's just locking the spindle into place. And then I'm going to put a clock as so soon as I can to the register. 0, 0.00 and this will read if we push the spindle in we can see that it's showing that we've got a radial clearance somewhere there that's just me pushing on the spindle of course now to get a better reading we need to put some pressure on it unfortunately the manual does not tell you how long the lever needs to Quite be now, yes. now if you look in the SKF manual for this type of bearing it's a double N type bearing a double N type K bearing which is tapered in a, it will tell you what forces to apply and what you would expect to to um, uh, to see in terms of clearances Schoblin did not give you that information all they tell you to do is to um, is is to look for radial play in the bearing. Now I'm going to use this. This is a, uh, a test bar, in fact, um, but it's it's about uh, uh, 120 millimeters long. I'm putting a fair bit of force on the end of end of here, and I'm measuring this at about zero zero eight so all I need to do now is to apply that number we'll put that number into the formula which is which is given in the in the instructions watch out for the mistake if you're looking on my website you should be this there's a copy of this document and there's actually a mistake they put the decimal place in the wrong place in the example but if you follow the uh, 
the example there you'll you'll be able to work out what the distance you need to move the collar through and what we're going to do now is we're going to uh, mark the collar so that we can uh, move the rotate the nut through a certain distance okay so I've determined what my uh, how much I need to move this in its radial direction I've stuck a piece of tape on there with the measurement so what I've done is I've worked out using the calculation what I need to um, to to move the bearing to take up not the 0 0.008 but I need to leave a clearance obviously so I'm taking up 0 0.005 so um, that's actually half the example that's given in the uh, in the uh, in the book there so I've cut a piece of tape that's 13.2 uh, millimeters long <laughs> 0.2 obviously you're not going to be able to measure that so um, in, in fact you know what you're going to have to keep refitting the bearing and checking as you're going along. You really don't want to over adjust it. So keep checking, move it a bit, check it again. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just get this round into a position and then mark it with a, a marker pen so I can see where, I, where I'm going to and then I can move the thing round and I shall do the usual thing of dropping it into the uh, into the tube here to adjust it up. But of course it's not going to move, you're not going to make it move round by the whole 13 millimeters you're going to have to do it in stages so you have to tighten it down as much as you can so let's just drop that in what you don't want to do is over tighten the whole thing of course because if you over tighten it you're going to I'm going to drop this in with the whole assembly if you over tighten it you're going to lose your um, you're going to possibly strip or stretch the nut. So let's drop that in. Yep, so that's now set the nut. The nut's probably loose now. And I can put that back into the vise and tighten it down again until we reach our mark. Yep, see the thing is loose. And I'll bring it down. essential to have a really good tight fitting C stander to do this job. Right that's actually perfect there. So we drop it back into the jig again, back into our tube and then we can assemble it up to check to see where we are terms of uh, in terms of our uh, clearance okay so the spindles back in the headstock and we're looking at our clock here this is zero it and let's see what uh, play we've got so difficult to do one hand um, so we're getting very close. So I'm going to measure this carefully now. There's still a little bit of radial play, probably could be better. Um, I'm applying very much force to there, so if I really get some, really just lean on that, I'm going to go mad with it, but uh, if I lean on it a little, I'm going to see that um, we're going to get slightly more than, than what we're seeing there at the moment. And I'll probably just need to adjust it a little more so I can check that measurement. Look at my calculation again to try and get to my uh, specification. Oops. So we we'll reassemble the spindle back into the headstock. Now as you do this, 
you do have to be careful that as you're reassembling the whole bearing, the bearing is now very close of course, and you do have to just be careful that you don't start pushing the rollers out as you go in. You really want the rollers just to slide in nicely and just rotating them slightly will allow that to happen. Your spindle really should be a nice sliding transition fit into that uh, into those rear bearings. Sometimes they can be very tight and there's only one option then but to drive the thing or it's better to pull it in of course rather than trying to drive it in and drive it out. Um, does the bearings now end of, end of, end of damage? Um, so um, I would always recommend pulling or pushing. Put a tail stop on this end and you can actually push the spindle in usually. So, uh, so we'll check that measurement again. A little bit more to move and then we'll check it again. I do recommend just keep checking it all the time to see where you are. Um, the measurement on the using your dot on the the circumferential movement of the of the nut is a should be an accurate guide, but it's not going to be perfect. So it is essential to just keep reassembling that spindle and double checking. You really don't want to over adjust the bearing. This is what Shoblin don't tell you in the literature there. I'm tempted just to tweak it a little bit more, but uh, generally I'm quite happy with where that's going. I should give it a little tiny tuck more just to move it, move it another millimetre or so on the circumference. And uh, and then I think we're we'll calling it a day. We're getting very close to our um, our recommended measurement. Okay, I hope this has been helpful. Um, of course, all one needs to do once the uh, once you've got the spindle where you want it to be, you just simply need to tighten that nut just so it's so it's just tight enough to be. Um, holding onto the onto the back of the uh, uh, of the uh, inner of the bearing. You're not trying to move it, of course. You're just trying to you just want it to be tight enough, and then to lock the uh, locking screw so it's locked in place, and then you can assemble the whole thing up.